Hello and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, May 20, uh, 31st, 2020. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the phone with us. Hello, Wombat. Surrounded by your glory, when will your heart feel? Will I dance yes, for you, Jesus? Jesus. Will I want to do this still? I can <laughs> Can't imagine either. <laughs> Those are very good singers. Those are very high notes. I'm going to, mercy good. me, They're you got good. my respect. That's, good notes. I, yeah. I topped out. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. And our guests today are uh, Boudreaux. Say hello, Boudreaux. Hello. And J.W. Kennedy. Hello, J.W. Uh, I didn't leave anyone out. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, and humanism in the sciences. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. Nice. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show breaks. Also, did you know that there has been a streaming atheist call-in video show? Used yes. Be TV show. Did you know that one about? Yes, yes, and I'm so glad that you love obscure Japanese anime because uh, Otomo game no uh, Himitsu Flagu is a really brilliant game about an Otome game where a girl gets transported into a video game where she's the villainous. She's the bad guy rival for the love character, but she's still herself. So she's actually a really nice person and she makes so friends cool. with all the beautiful boys and all the beautiful girls. I'll have to everybody watch loves her. It's amazing. Yeah, it sounds it's great. Really, really good. But it it's not our show. <laughs> oh, okay. No, well, never mind. I'll keep no, it. no, that's not the right one. Uh, did, uh, it's called Free Thought Forum. We'll give you more information after the mid-show break about how you can watch it, maybe even become involved in it. Um, if you'd like to interact with this show during during this show, the broadcast, when we do it on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, go to Facebook and search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and use the messaging function to send us questions or comments. Or you can just email to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. Uh, what is our topic today, Wombat? I thought something really incredible happened yesterday. It was supposed to happen on Wednesday, but there's no sweat. I'm not Russian, but we just launched a spaceship from the <laughs> USA with people in it up to the space station from a private company that not only was able to launch the spaceship, but also had the spaceship land back down on Earth <laughs> on a little freighter. And in my opinion, uh, Larry, you're just mute and unmute yourself. You come right back. But I'm saying like, in my opinion, that is one of the most incredible things that I've ever seen. That's like a spectacular thing that uh, makes me feel like in a lifetime that I'm that I'm experiencing right now, I might see, you know, I might be in the generation of people who like just came off the moon landing to International Space Station to first flight out to Mars. Like that actually might happen in my lifetime. And yeah. I feel really excited about that. And when I was a kid, one of the things that, I mean, science fiction movies were always rockets going to like some other planet and mm -hmm. they would land like that. They would mm -hmm. land point down, you know, <laughs> with their bottom down. Exactly. Their, yeah. And I haven't, I never thought that I would actually see that because it didn't make much sense anymore. But with modern technology and the yeah. computers and, and having the computer figure out all the logistics as it's coming down, mm. it makes sense now. And it's just amazing to actually see it come to fruition. I, I, I just want to get everyone's opinions on like this incredible thing that happened. I, I wonder if we're desensitized to it or if we're, if we think of it as like the incredible event that it could be. Boudreaux, you'll be the first up to that. What do you think about this, man? Uh, so one of, one of the things I thought was cool, and this was actually during the Wednesday uh, launch attempt, but hearing the, the astronauts talk about the technology in, you know, in the cab, uh, you know, and then they were like flashing images of the, uh, um, you know, the, the pr previous launches and then even in more recent launches and talking about, I mean, they've got touch screens. Yeah. They, they used to have to do all of these, these extra procedures and double checks and open up these books and look at things. And now it's all just like, click, click, right. click, click, click. Oh, it's yeah. awesome. Just, you got to wonder how far behind uh, American flight technology or the world flight technology. It's insane. It's you so bad. A well, bit of a, a jet airliner, and you still got a billion buttons and levers and, and everything you got to keep in mind. 
it's, Why not it's just crazy. replace them with the with a heads up display or a, or a gaming process. controller because I can yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can fly a drone well, we, pretty well with this. We've thing, all right? flown planes uh, sim- <laughs> simultaneously, or simulationally. Yeah, on computers. Heck, why not just make it part of? I, the I will, if anything, make it a keyboard and then just call it yeah. end of the day. Yeah, that'd be fine. I will say this though: uh, we we have uh, for for the band I play in, we've got a digital mixer. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, it's just a box where you plug things in. There are no knobs, dials, levers, anything, and you can't control it all unless you have like an iPad or. Yeah, or, I've seen it, and then that's fantastic. It works great. You can save things. You can, I mean, software update. You can get new new options. But that mixer in your picture, or I mean, right behind you, uh, daughter five, uh, physically right right behind you, not not yeah, a, not right an image over there, yeah. virtually. Yeah. But the, the difference though is if you have something go wrong, and you're at a show and you need to fix something quickly you know, your battery dies on the iPad or Wi-Fi connection's bad. You just, you can't change it. And I'm, I'm wondering how that translates to in space, you know, something goes funny and now you don't have a physical thing to turn, you know? Mm. So yeah. my two cents from that was, and I, I saw a video where they actually made comments on like how they used to be all push knobs and none of that stuff's like hard analog. Like it's not like you turn a crank and like a string pulls something like a break. Mm-hmm. It's more of like talking to a relay and the relay decides what happens. But what's cool about the touchscreen display is even if the, both astronauts pass out, Mission Control can fly that plane to where it needs to be yeah. because it's yeah. all, it's, it's close enough yeah. where it's like, we know how to fly this plane. We're good. Yeah. You guys yeah, are there we, just to look pretty. Can you imagine, <laughs> That's true. Can you imagine you're orbiting Mars, you're, you're an astronaut, you're orbiting Mars, you're coming down, you know, and you're about ready to, to land and you hit the button or you hit the screen and you go, boom. The blue screen of death. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be so bad. Yeah, it's He's like, like, please reboot. We'll take care what? of it. <laughs> Martian IT support. But I'm uh, Joey. Oh, I'm sorry, J W Kennedy. Stage name. What do you got? What do you think about this? Well, I actually just recently watched a, a short documentary on um, Mars exploration and how they've been trying to do it for almost thirty years, um, and it keeps for political reasons they don't they're not haven't been receiving the funding that they need. But um, in the documentary, I don't know if this is still the plan, um, but they're going to send up an unmanned spaceship and it's going to land on Mars and they're going to make sure it lands safely. And that's actually going to be their, their, their trip home. That's going, they're going to switch. Oh, that's cool. I like that, man. I can't wait to save uh, it. that, That he said it like it would save almost like half in their budget. Mm. to do that really sure. wow yeah yeah uh i, I know how he explained it did they have a timeline on that um no I, I, when this document this is an old older documentary from like mm. five oh, I see. five years ago or something like that where they, mm. they were still trying to work on getting the funding for it it was still just talk so okay my big takeaway from this is i love the fact that it, it wasn't like a christian project it wasn't like a Muslim project. It wasn't like a, a white people or a black person or any particular group's project. We came together as a country and made this happen. And it took a lot of talent from a lot of different people. And it should be a demonstration that whether you're religious or not, you can work together to make an incredible thing happen. So there is progress possible. And it wasn't necessarily an action that was motivated by a religious belief. That's, that's the other crux too. So like with with different minds coming together on the basis of what can we do scientifically and make this like uh, this engineering pursuit happen in real world and, and, and be incredible and be like safe for everybody else to go in it as well. That is a pursuit that I think even if you were listening to this and you're like a staunch Christian, you'd be like, but yeah, maybe science is actually pretty useful. Maybe science is kind of cool. And maybe we should check this out. Maybe I should fund this a little bit more (laughs) or shouldn't brag about how high school is a waste of time. We can't pray our way to to Mars. Man, I just feel like physics students in class will be like, well, what, what's this useful for? It's like, dude, did you just watch what happened on the news right now? You have to know this to do that. Like, do you want to do that? Do you want to be a part of that? This is where we're going right now. Like, mm-hmm. you are the next generation. And I just think it's good. Um, I, I will, oh, go for it. No, I well, will say- I was one, just saying it was exciting. Yeah. One thing that did irk me a little bit. Um, the countdown was done by a person who at the end of the countdown said Godspeed which didn't bother me at first, 
because I had my Twitter ready to go like Godspeed on the science thing. But then I was like, I looked it up and I'm like, I, I can, I can that with like, God bless you where it's like, it's, mm. it's no particular endorsement of anything. It's like, it's just an old saying. It's a ship that's flying up in space. I'm like, whatever, that's cool. That's but cool. we have to give credit to God for everything because yeah, sure, he, sure. He, he does everything. That for God us, and our moms. Even though Makes we do things possible. for ourselves, that's actually him doing it. So yeah. we have to give credit to him or he'll be very upset. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, though, I think good week as far as science goes. And you don't really have like something as obviously monumental that everyone can just dial in at the same time. So, uh, um, Boudreau. Yeah. We're still going off. I don't even know if we're coming off, but like we're still in this, you know, COVID-19 situation, right? Yeah. Um, it's still hard to reach out and connect with other people. We have a lot of, we have something that I'd like to throw at you. We, uh, JW Kennedy and I tried something yesterday that I thought would might be interesting to you. And that is a, uh, a 10 minute, you cannot stop talking session. So like I, someone picks a topic, they have like a list of four topics. Someone sees it for the first time and they have to talk about those things mm. and let them go wherever they go for 10 minutes. Here's the challenge. The person who's talking can't stop for 10 minutes. The person who's listening has to listen and stop. work on that listening skills. Type of thing. <laughs> Larry, what'd you say? Stream of consciousness type of exactly. thing. Exactly. It goes places, man. It goes places. And it was intense. <laughs> like Ten minutes. It like does. JW, you, you mind recapping? And then Eric, I'd like to get your impression of this if this is something you'd like to try out too. Yeah. Well, I just said uh, uh, a couple of things that that hmm. was the topic is something I'd been thinking about earlier this week. So I kind of got had um got a chance to get it off of my chest i hope i articulated it well you did incredible yeah yeah but so, i mean yeah I, I already know that i mean it's it's been therapeutic for me and it's only been 24 hours <laughs> yeah so we had like a topic like masculinity for example you want to touch on that well i just um the um the lgbt plus movement and um, and uh, the identity politics surrounded this. I um, I didn't meet my my biological father till I was 24. I didn't have a father figure until I was around 13. My mom left when I was eight. So and I was never really. I tried out for contact sports. Really wasn't my thing. And so theater was my thing, and music was my thing, and science and video games were my thing and mm. so in high school i kind of i kind of went through a little bit of this crisis it's just like well i'm not like other guys and i don't like the things other guys like i must not be like like a real man as they say and then i kind of i in some reflection and maybe even some uh, maybe i talked to my therapist about it i'm not sure because i was seeing a therapist um, when i was a teenager um i just I realized that masculinity is not an masculinity and femininity. It's not an exact science. It's they're no. both social constructs. They're both when it comes to, and when it comes to their roles, when it comes to, okay, this is, you know, this is what m you men usually like, or this is what men usually do. And it's a spectrum. Men usually act. Mm. It's, just, uh -huh. it's um, and, and I came to grips with this a long time before the the LGBT movement and identity politics and the far left started presenting what is it 51 genders now I, I'm just kind of confused by that I haven't read the so-called sociological research that is claimed to support that but it seems it seems a bit much it seems a bit unnecessary like what the only thing that really I should, con uh, the only thing that really I concern myself with when I identify as what they say cisgender male is that I have the male parts and that's about it. I don't, I don't see any good reason to believe that I have to be interested in cars to be a man. I have to watch football on a regular basis to be a man. I have to, you know, uh, Eat and fill in the blank to be a man. It's just, sure. I, I, but I came to grips with that a long time ago. So anyway, that was, that's kind of the soapbox on that. Eric, how do you feel about that? Are you on the same page or would you add some nuance to that? 
No, and uh, you know, kind of wish Chad was able to join today because yeah, he's he's him. got a lot of yeah, yeah. He, he's 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 staying pretty. He's busy. flipping houses. Yeah, yeah, um, but yeah, he's he's a, actually has a lot of kind of uh, um, uh, interest in this in this topic, and we've talked about it before. I, you know, I, I guess for me, it, it it gets a little tricky when you start talking about participating in sports, uh, you know, particularly competitive and Olympic level and things like that. You know. You have transgender entering the equation and someone identifying a certain way. I mean, how do you know that someone's not doing that just to win a medal or, yeah. you know, and, and it gets, and, and this is one of those things where it's, I don't think there's a simple answer to it. It's, it's tough. It's a new road. I mean, we, we've had perverts going into bathrooms for, you know, forever. Yeah. And now, now that we have bathrooms that are gender neutral, now everybody's all of a sudden worried about perverts. It's like, yeah. well, <laughs> they were there before. Yeah. I, just, I, yeah. And, and I'm talking as a person who doesn't have kids. It's not so much the, the pervert in the bathroom aspect. It's just a very unhygienic pervert. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's the worst place you could yeah. do that in. Yeah. Yeah. Can't you just find a playground somewhere? Actually, yeah. playgrounds are disgusting too. But I mean, come on, guys. Yeah, uh, uh, this thing about different genders playing in different in sports just to get a medal, like a uh, male identifying as a woman just to be able to get into women's sports. Maybe we have to break that down into uh, height and weight, like we do boxing. You mm -hmm. know, like lightweight and middleweight, and and just. Uh, let them go at it if they're all the same stature and weight basically they mm -hmm. can't compete maybe we just need to take another look at it My well, thing what they're talking about now is requiring if you went through uh puberty as a certain gender you will have to compete as in that in that arena and so, well, that's, it's, I don't know if that's something that they've, they've put in as a rule yet, but I, I, I heard a rumor that that's what they're talking right. about. It's it just sounds like, like they're a right asking the question, did, did they go through thing. puberty as, as that, yeah. you know, that particular gender? Sounds like an excuse. Yeah. I don't know what kind of label to put this on, but for me, it's always about consent. And if I have, for example, if I, if I want to become a female woman's MMA star, right? Um, if the lady knows what my history is and she's consenting to this and she knows she's going to beat me <laughs> regardless of whatever my background is, we're consenting to this. But if I am very, very good post-surgery and I pass as a female and I have like, you know, biological advantages that I'm carrying with me and I don't tell my opponent that I feel like that's a contra that's contrary Dishonest. to the consent of the fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've seen both cases happen. And I'm and what I would like it to, to just be is a transparent issue such that everyone who's aware of it and consenting to it are fine to compete. Because I feel like anyone can compete anyone can compete as long as there's con consent involved. Consensual. But if it's not consent or if there's like some stuff that's going on, it's like who who am I racing against? Who's why does this person have four quadriceps? <laughs> 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 this makes no sense. This person's half horse. That's not yeah. cool. I didn't <laughs> sign up for that. It's like, well, they're trans species. Like that's not I didn't trans consent species. to this. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> Like, but if I consent to it, I'll race a horse. I will watch that on TV any day. There is, um, there is a interesting idea that um, in, in the realm of non-combative sports, that it's a non-issue, whether you say like, hey, racing, bike racing, it's an exhibition game at the most. Like, this isn't really like a tournament. We just want to show we're inclusive. And I feel like at those, even in those levels, when the participants aren't consenting to having, you know, a, uh, a, someone who's, who is transitioning or someone who's maybe from, because we're hominids, uh, the, a stronger gender coming or stronger sex coming on to like this in, into this arena, it, it feels like it's an unfair disadvantage for someone who's worked really hard to get out competed by someone who probably had a biological advantage. And that's, right. that's unfair. I feel like just make it consensual and I'm totally fine with it. And if not, I mean, black people well, have the same there's situation. A problem. There's a problem no, go for there. It. Let's say that you're in Talk the Olympics and uh, you don't really get to pick who the other country is going to submit for the competition yeah. and you don't consent. Well, all yeah. of a sudden you're booted from the competition. You have no choice, no chance at all of getting that, that prize. Yeah. I think people have protested though before, like that's not the first time people have said, well, I'm just not going to the Olympics then get somebody else and then the rest yeah. of the team is like we're not going either um we've we've had countries entire countries just say we're not competing in this sport because 
Germans or Nazis. We or don't, Ru- we're not going to or Berlin. Or Russians are, are steroiding. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Or, uh, but I think it's just, I think if we look in history and I'm, I'm not sure how analogous this is, but I can say like, there used to be a time where black people couldn't play baseball with white people. And so black people said, we're really good at baseball. We're going to just make our own league. It's going to be called the Le- mm-hmm. the Negro league. Yeah. And that was like a really, really cool sport. Cause it was the same rules, but people were a lot faster. <laughs> people were hitting the ball <laughs> a lot harder and the balls were flying a lot faster. And people were like, you know, we should probably have some of these guys play with us. Let's make this work out. And then, and next thing you know, sports got a lot better as, as yeah. a result. But I'm saying like, it's it, like no one was supporting the Negro League. There's no funding like for that. That was like grassroots as you can get. And it's a really interesting history behind that too. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be hard to demonstrate the talent of like individuals who are transitioning and saying like, hey, these are, this is a unique aspect of the sport. Maybe I can find other people who are like on the same level. And if not, I don't know, but I just feel like you should just work harder to get the consent rather than sneak it in. Cause I yeah. feel like that's gonna harm you in the long run, even yeah. if you benefit in the short term. Well, Boudreaux, we, we all kind of stepped on your, your topic there. <laughs> yeah, Did man. you oh. have anything you'd like to flesh out on that before we... No, and, and I guess uh, uh, for me, it would be interesting to comment on on the format uh, that you guys did. So the 10 minute kind of stream of consciousness talk, that sounds really cool to you. So you don't, you don't tell people the topic ahead of time? No. So, but we do give them four, a uh, random four topics to, to okay. go off of. And then from there, they are free to pick any of the one, initial ones and then branch off to wherever they need to go from there. And then after that, um, we just do a quick review session. And the meanwhile, I'm just recording like some of the best quotes that I've heard. Mm. And it's insane the places you go. And there's also um, a follow-up where it's like, okay, you, you talk about these two things when you're on your stream of conscious. Let's go back to these topics and go from there. And we got to some really intense territory. Like it was, I was not anticipating it for it to get um, as emotional as we got to, but it's, it's a cool thing when you just have to keep talking and you don't put that filter on. And then eventually it's just, this is what it is. And for, even for the listener, it's a bit exhausting to just say, man, there's a lot of stuff to, to, to pull through this, man. Yeah. It was, it was intense, dude. So was, is there any kind of a rebuttal or any kind of a, a comment back from the listener or? No, uh, just... I don't know. I don't know the format so well. I don't want it to be a place where it's like, here's my counter argument to this. Right. It's more of like, um, these are the positive things I'm pulling ah, out. Gotcha. Okay. So this is, yeah. A, yeah. Good. And then that, that's, yeah. Yeah. I JW, like what do you think? What do you think? Should it be more of a rebuttal? It'd be my good, maybe it's um, good to get some feedback. You just, you just didn't introduce me to this. So I'm not, um, I'd, I'd say clarif- clarification questions. It, it depends on, I don't know. I think that'd be something to just think about in time. Yeah. There is something called the what, interrupt what's card. productive. I mean, we want, do we, do we want this to be like an SC session or do we want this to be just more of a, you know, venting session? Yeah. I, I, I just don't think we can have both at the same time. Exactly. And I'm trying not to make it be either because SC, I don't know how good SC is over video chat. And I also don't know if I have the patience to listen to someone vent, but it's more of like, oh, or preach exactly because you don't know who you're talking to sometimes and i don't have patience for that but it's more of like a interesting where is this gonna go and how how and i know i don't have control over it so i'm not even going to try to have control over it i just want to see if i can see the branches of thoughts and can and and from point to point to point can i see like the trajectory of the conversation as a listener because a lot of the time when you're talking to someone you're hanging on the words that they're saying, but you also need to see where they're going and if it's in a positive direction or a negative direction as far as the conversation is going. And I felt like it's just a really good talent to be able to understand momentum in a conversation and, and like vector, like where is this directing? Where are we going? Where we will be like two minutes from now? Do we end up there or are we somewhere completely different? It's just good. It's just nice to have my finger on that. Um, there is, there is a lot of cool things going on, but man, I, I think we're already at the half of the show. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not oh, wow. I'm, yeah, we're 27 minutes in. Um, how about this? Before we take a break, one more thing. We, I am, I'm kind of sad by the, the passivity that I'm sensing from you guys. We just launched a spaceship mm-hmm. with people <laughs> in it into space. 
And you guys like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, we, we, we've done that before. That's happened. In was it in your lifetime? Uh, well, we tried to launch people in the space once in my lifetime, but that's true. That's true. Yeah, like international people, space stations had people in it for years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, I think the more things well, happen, this sounds like the first it. time a, a spaceship has actually come down and landed itself. Yeah, from a private world. company, like yeah, that it that's like is Amazon amazing. did that's that. Or something. Yeah, like like if Walgreens launched a spaceship, <laughs> <laughs> it's basically like hey, whoa, it I heard could happen. Building a hotel. <laughs> Disney's planning on building a hotel that's going to orbit the Earth. Right. There's always been a question of what do you do with a lot of money? And I feel like Elon Musk is doing the best, coolest yeah. things with money. Like the Virgin Mobile guy, he's like on a water ski with models. It's like, sure, but hip hop artists that are losing their money and going bankrupt do that same thing too. Do something cool. You know, Elon Musk is like, yeah. I could build an Iron Man suit or I can make a spaceship and make electric cars and like do all that. Do all of it. And he's like, I'm going to still going to do all of it. And I'm like, that's great. Cool. Yeah. So we're waiting on the Iron Man suit. Anyway, that's it. Okay, so we'll take a break for a station identification and maybe a song. Um, this is WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll see you in just a minute. Ooh, 103.9 FM Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Simply the best. Hey, you ready to continue? Let's do it. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Five, and this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, May 31st, 2020. Welcome back to the second half of the show. Uh, let's talk about the free thought groups that you can join right here in Knoxville. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville, founded in 2002. We're in our 18th year. We have about 1,020 members now. You can join us online at knoxvilleatheist.org, or you can simply Google Knoxville Atheist, and you'll find us. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. That's right. Another large free-thinking group in Knoxville are the Rationalists of East Tennessee. That's R-E-T. Just go to rationalist.org to find out about their events and all about them. Earlier in the show, we said we'd talk about Knoxville Atheist Call and TV show. Well, it's called Free Thinkers United Coalition. It's a kind of a coalition of the different free thinking groups in Knoxville, and they're doing it on YouTube now. Go to YouTube and type in Free Thinkers United Coalition of Knoxville. And remember, you can find archives of their shows on YouTube where a fan has been posting them. If you're interested in getting involved in the TV or this radio show, just go to an Ask Meetup or RET meeting or email us. Uh, send a request to Ask an Atheist at KnoxvilleAtheist.org if you want to. And uh, you may be our next co host or guest. <clears throat> With us on the show are Wombat and hey. uh, guest Joey, um, J.W. Kennedy, sorry, uh, Boudreaux, and uh, we miss you, Dread Pirate Higgs. Uh, maybe next time. Yeah, you too, Chad. Uh, that's right. Where do you want to come back on the topic? Uh, hey, I like to start with my favorite section of the whole show. Do you guys? Do you guys? <laughs> you guys see where it is? Mm -hmm. You guys find it? Yeah, yeah. You found it? The, the I can't find my love. Where oh, is the love. love? Where is the love? The love? The love? Where, where, is, where the is the love? love? Today's question comes from Satan Satan Claus from Reddit. He's Satan. been posting on r slash street epistemology has a question for us he says hey i was um how would you respond to someone who uses locations as justification for their belief um here's the full question i was wondering a lot about street epistemology and i don't have a way to question whether locations are reliable or not for example if a christian were to say that they believe that moses really received the ten commandments from god because mount sinai exists what is a good way to respond to that well, or five. I'll throw this out. <clears throat> Real locations have been used in fictional works for for centuries, millennia. What? Yes. Really? Uh, if, I mean, in, how long has England been around? Does that mean that uh, Merlin that's, and that's uh, King Arthur were real? And magic and dragons and all that is real. Troy has been around for thousands of years. Does that mean that Achilles really was invulnerable? You know, stories grow up about real places as well as mythical places. There's no there's no no credence to be had in that direction. Wow. Wow. Very, very straightforward. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> Pedro, That's me. 
Boudreaux, what do you think? And then maybe on the angle of trying to actually convince someone who thinks that this is a good argument, what would you say to them? Say some, yeah. someone says, hey, well, you yeah. know, this Jerusalem does exist, therefore. Well, I, I think uh, probably the way I would look at it is one of the best ways to craft uh, a lie or a con or something like that would be to try to cling to as much truth as you can, mm. right? So if you're going to, if you're going to whip up a story uh, to try to explain why your wife got pregnant or uh, try to, uh, you know, explain why it rains or something like that. I mean, pepper in as much truth as you can um, to make it more believable. So, of course, you're going to pick real places and real things. Or, or why can't it just be that, you know, things that were put in, put in a book for fiction kind of became something, you know, pe people picked up on the name and we have names of cities and and streets uh, surely named after fic fictional places, right? I mean, I can't. Yeah, come up yeah. Right There's, offhand, but mm -hmm. uh, Harry Potter's um, train oh. station is actually in yeah. London. There's actually a placard for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. Seems seems kind of silly. Uh, yeah. Uh, Though I've heard uh, that argument thrown at me before, so me it's too. not like yeah. okay, yeah. yeah, it's not yeah. uncommon. Oh my gosh, I've and heard it, it in the laboratory. All right, J.W. Kennedy, go for yeah. it in the lab. It, when you're when you're studying history you've got to have some sort of you know discernment you've got to be able to distinguish from what's story from a historical event and and religious people are fine with all, every other religion and every other mythology and every other story speaking that is extraordinary and clearly just a story being considered you know fiction yeah fiction but when it comes to when we come to their text and we use the same methods and we discern hey it kind of looks like fiction sorry -uh. it's just i don't know what to do <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah. yeah i met someone who was really really bragging that they went over to kadesh and i was just like i don't know where kadesh even is on the map i didn't say that out loud i was just wondering like where's kadesh and why does it sound familiar i'm like what so i asked the girl like and this is in a laboratory we're like handling microbe plates and stuff and it's just like so where's kadesh it's like it's middle east you never heard of kadesh it's like no like what what's special about it i would love to know and she looked at me very very angrily and she said it's where the bible happened <laughs> <laughs> and i was Sweet. like in a switch of my head just went like i care to i don't care anymore <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just like, oh, okay. okay. I don't know what the sound was, but it was sort of like, oh, all right. <laughs> we just did the rest of the work. I think I walked out of the room later on, but I never felt such a hard flip. Just like, oh, <laughs> so I don't have to care about what you think anymore. Great. Wonderful. <laughs> that saved me a lot of time. Um, uh, to add to what everyone else is saying, I would say strictly from an epistemological point of view, and this may not necessarily be the response, but it'll be if I read in a book that Mount Sinai existed and it was like the Bible, that wouldn't even be good enough proof that Mount Sinai existed. I would, there's much better proof to determine if things exist than reading in a 2000 year old book. I can look it up in a map. I can go on Google maps. I can see people that came from there. I can see cultures. I can look it up on Wikipedia. I, I, I could visit there myself. All of these would be better standards of evidence. And as long as it's a mundane claim, like, you know, New York exists, I'm sure, there are cities that are named after New York, right? Like there's pro New York probably isn't the only city called New York in America. Like there's a lot of cities that have Yorkshire in them and, and, and are new versions of like English towns that came over. But these are very mundane claims and I can still find a better standard of evidence to support those claims. But when you use these low standards of evidence to, to support really, really grand voice claims like Moses existed and he was a guy who could split the seas with a stick and cause food to fall out of the sky and people and, and move like four i forgot how many slaves he moved out of egypt but it was more than 12. let's just say it's more than 12. definitely more yeah. than 12. uh all of these things would need a higher standard of evidence because they're much more extraordinary claims right my what you, is, oh go for it well, what you were saying a little while ago about uh your your lady friend and the flip the little switch flipping yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, nobody's mentioned him yet but um oh now I can't remember his name. It was in my mind just a minute ago. His name's Sam uh, Harris. Sam Harris. Exactly. <laughs> Don't worry. I forget him all the time. Yeah. He, he <laughs> says, and the, the way he puts it is when they do things like that, when they say things like that, it, 
they pay a price <laughs> for for uh, bringing the magical world into the regular world. Like if you could be talking to your friend and then all of a sudden he starts off on this rant that he saw Elvis yesterday. Right. Well, he pays a price, yeah. you know, uh, in the conversation and, and his standing in the conversation as it were. Uh, and no, you're she, absolutely she's correct. A, she certainly did. She, you no longer cared for her opinion or what her opinion was. And, that and was when she talks, paid. And when she talks to other people who believe the exact same thing she does, she doesn't realize that she's cashing checks with that the same check back and forth. So right. she's not making a profit. It's only right. when she talks to someone who's completely out of her bubble mm -hmm. that it's like, right. hey, where'd my money go? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, th I thought I gave him $5. Yeah. It's like, where'd it go? Yeah. It's, like, it's gone because I don't know that anymore. JW brought up a thing a little while ago about how, hist how historians, or maybe it was you, uh, were talking about how... Uh, we don't ascribe to history things like magic and things. It's it's yeah. called the concept of continuity in history. Uh, historians, when they when they look at the past and they see stories like, you know, Jesus then rose from the dead, you know, they say, well, people don't rise from the dead now. We don't see that happening. This is not something that we credit now. Right. Why would we credit it then? Right. It's a continuity of history that, that historians have to ascribe to, to be taken seriously, basically, in their own field. Yeah. Pedro. Can we, can I jump back to the, the previous point you guys were making about cash and checks? Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I've thought about this a lot late, lately, and I think maybe we, we brought this up, maybe not here, but one of our offline talks. Mm. And when you meet someone for the first time and you find out they're religious, do you, do you feel like you have a, a almost want to say a prejudice because you, you're kind of prejudging against that person? Yeah, I do. And then, and then on the flip side, when you meet someone, you find out they're an atheist, do you kind of have the opposite reaction? Like, I'm yeah, gonna hug you. you know, yeah, I feel I that did. they're operating in the real world. Now they yes, may have some it's... bad, crazy, the sure. Series, guaranteed. But, uh, guaranteed. But everybody, <laughs> you know, has some little area that they that they have a pet area for that they they need to. It's almost. Justify. I but, once I flew to Sweden to do work there for a year, and um, when I was getting my residency card, I was in line, and I remember meeting people who had like an American flag on their like shoulder, and like maybe American like sparse bangled shoes and i'm like hey you speak english from america and it's like no 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 sorry it's, it's just a fashion statement for them to wear the badge and, and like the shoes and i'm like oh geez that's right like different country they just wear it so i lived in a really small town very few people spoke english and whenever i did meet someone who did i met a canadian and i was just like oh my god america it's just like i'm canadian it's like it's the same thing <laughs> come on north america <laughs> come on let's hang out it's, it's good it's just like no i was like come on we're, we got to be so that's why i feel like when i meet another atheist it's just like yeah. i've been in this country for so long <laughs> i just want to yeah. reach out yeah i i totally get that i definitely have that the that don't you I, I, I do. And, and it's something I like to kind of keep in check because mm. the thing about it, if, if I'd have met JW before his deconversion, I would hate to, well, no, but I mean, he was a person. <laughs> you, 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 no. Yeah. Well, but, but think about how I'd miss out on knowing you as a person. So a uh, I, I guess I also think too, that, that not everybody has put this much thought into it as, as we have. I mean, I put a lot of thought, I think about oh, religion yeah. more than, most of my religious friends i'm oh, sure absolutely yeah there's yeah. so many people that just kind of their default their default religion their default religious they're just that's what they've always known yeah. it's the easiest path and honestly i bet if you really probe them they mm. they oh uh, yeah i'm actually not i guess i'm not yeah. that boudreaux, boudreaux i'll tell you straight out the benefit of being religious is that you don't have to think about religion yes yeah, yeah. gives you a gold-plated reason to stop thinking i think yeah it, and that's that is a great, you have to think about it as a benefit. That's a mm -hmm. pretty good benefit as far mm -hmm. as like, hey man. And yeah. sleeping late on Sunday and a 10% <laughs> raise in pay. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely benefits on the other side too. Yeah, you're just yeah. like, oh yeah, I like my weekends. Wait, um, you get a 10% raise by not believing? No tithing. Me. Yeah, no, no tithing. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, you get, I guess defense, you didn't read the in, fine print. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in, in their defense, some of them have been psychologically abused to the oh, point that made there's it, a lot of benefits of leaving right. religion behind. Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. I'm well. I'm just saying that 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 some of them may have been psychologically abused to the point where they may not. I, 
I, this is a, I don't, I, I don't have evidence right now to like quote or cite, but mm. there, there might be people who are incapable of leaving because of the amount of abuse that they've, they've, sure. uh, they've gone through. And yeah, so no, it's on the surface that it's just them not being a critical thinker, but sometimes there might be more at play there. It's amazing the what you can do yeah. when you never give someone the idea to cope with death until like they're in their thirties and they just never had the experience to just look at it honestly. And now all of a sudden it's just like, what? Nah, God. Sorry, Buja, what all were right. you saying? No, no, I was going to say in, in the Muslim world, there's mm. even a, a bigger penalty to, to not being religious. You know, I mean, there, there would be fear. I mean, I, oh, yeah, I imagine yeah. there are a lot of people that would otherwise be atheists, but they just, they're too scared. I've met, I've met um, a former Muslim atheists in our lab before, and I won't call them out, but well, they in our group. Great. They told me like, you're an atheist. Like, yeah. Cause at that point I was like, I was, just, I was just getting used to the idea of just saying it out loud. And you would be surprised how many people are like, Oh yeah, me too. I'm like, Whoa, I had no idea. But I met a guy who I thought was Muslim turned out former Muslim just does the bowing just to make sure his family's good. And he doesn't bring any stigma to anyone. And then eventually he got a job back at his, in his home country. And I was just like, oh, that's going to suck. He's like, yeah, it's going to suck. But I got a family. Mm. I was just like, yeah, all right. Keep at it. Keep at it. So Yeah, yeah. Your, your survival and your family's survival and well-being is primary. Yeah, yeah. That's, do you that's guys, hard. Do you participate in the one – there's one day a year that's kind of advertised as a, a come out as an atheist to someone that doesn't know? To someone you to, to someone you you know that doesn't know you're an atheist to, to tell them, I like doing that on my own time. I didn't know there was a specific. I didn't know there was a day. Yeah, yeah it's it, it's something that I, uh, I I should do more as well. But you know, again, because some sometimes with work and hmm. and other things, it just you know it's 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 getting less and less of, of an issue for me. But I I still worry a little bit about it. Hmm. Uh, I've been outed in the neighborhood, and I think some people judge us differently because of it. But um, but I do, I, yeah, every year I, I make, I make an attempt to tell someone and, and even try to pick someone kind of risky, someone, Ooh, that, look at you, you know? Yeah. Well, Hey, president Trump, <laughs> and, <laughs> back. a lot of people are surprised when they, um, it, at least with the experiences that they've had with me, that I've been a nice person, yeah. and, um, you're an atheist, but you're so nice. That's yeah. exactly what I was told. And they the say, very first person. person. Their, that's their argument. They're just like, like, how can you just, dude, you got the love of Jesus just all over you, man. I'm just so, oh, wow. I'm just so uh, uh, just confused, man. I just, just yeah, I, I really wouldn't have along with Joey. I love science and I, I just care about people. That's just what I do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have. I found that my YouTube channel has been actually a really good vehicle for me to express mm. like the atheism in a really good way. Cause I won't even tell them I'm an atheist. I just say, Hey, I do these really interesting hobbies where I talk to random strangers for like five minutes and I'm like, what? I want to check that out. And then through the process of watching the videos, they're like, Oh, I get where he's coming from. Cause like, I'm very open with where I'm at and it's good to see someone use what they would use as arguments before they even use them on me. Because then they were like, oh, okay. Oh, well then, oh, all right. Well, that's cool. I like this. This is nice. Like, it's just a really good way to introduce that. Um, I know more people, more and more people at my work, the work, the job that I have right now, know of my YouTube channel and know of my position non-religiously, I guess. And, and they love the gossip. So <laughs> I'm totally fine with it. There is one Christian at my job though. And, or not, I don't mean by one. I mean like there's one good friend that I have who's definitely Christian who probably doesn't know, but I am, I am slowly putting the layers on. And every single time I ask him questions about his religion, it's always, yeah, I'm definitely Christian. And then you ask like two questions like, yeah, but it's not like I'm really a Christian or like, I don't really like read the Bible or anything like that. It's just like, okay, it may not even be worth having these kinds of talks with you. Mm-hmm. we're almost i want to bring up something this is a really good tangent um in two hours four hours i actually have a debate with a christian and on the topic of meeting an atheist and being really happy or meeting a christian and 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 feeling a little apprehension but like overall getting over it have you ever this guy that i'm having a debate with is a person who i had a conversation with at nanocon uh where larry and i went up to national and uh met people and i did some tabling there 
Um, he had a really good conversation with me and I had a good conversation with him, but I assumed that he was an atheist. We actually talked about math and like the idea of like the value of science and all that stuff. And his definition for atheism is exactly on point. I, he said, Hey, I have, I do a show too. Can we, please, can you please come on? And I'm like, totally fine. What do you want to talk about? He's like, does a God exist? And I'm like, which God? Cause I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to give anyone the credit that there's a capital G God or atheism. Like it's not that like. There's so many different God claims. Let's All right. That's usually what I, I say when I, I'm on Facebook and says, talk about God exists. I usually yeah. just throw that out. I yeah. Get some response. But I'm curious uh, who this Christian is that you're going to be uh, debating. So uh, you may not remember him, but his name is Pedro. Um, he's from Ask and Wonder. Are you familiar with him? You never heard him? Okay. Uh, I'll be happy to share that video when, when we do it. But okay. the idea is, um, I was very, imp I was very sure that this guy was free thinking. Turned out he's Christian. I asked him in the email. I was like, no, I'm a follower of Christ. And I'm, and I want to talk about God. I'm like, listen, <laughs> there are billions of people that you can talk to Christ about. In fact, and yeah. in fact, you have this voice in your head that you have direct communication with, with like your holy higher power the difference between all those opportunities you have in that conversation you can have with your higher power is that. I actually am listening <laughs> oh. and as a result, I have, I'm not immortal. I have a limited amount of time and there's better. If you want to have a conversation with God, you can have them with other people, but I would rather talk about like how you came to a conclusion or how about this? I'm an atheist. You're a former atheist. He said he was a former atheist. Why don't we talk about atheism? Because he, because it's not a worldview. I think we can agree on that. It's just an answer to one question. And there's like a lot of things that people apply on that label maybe we can talk about that that'd be a really interesting conversation so that's what i'm going to try to focus the conversation on and i'm not here unlike jw's example from last night to be preached at for 10 minutes at a time while i'm quiet if we go off rails i'll be like hey this is what i want to talk about this is the time that we have let's use it wisely and uh yeah that's my point <laughs> so you, undoubtedly there will be a cross somewhere in, in the background of his video feed when you're Almost talking about this yeah Oh, make, Jay Pirate. make sure you ask him, uh, hey, what does the lowercase t stand for? <laughs> Do you ever feel this is it the most tangible thing? Uh, it that and when they ask you to pray for when they ask to pray for you, you, you right. say I'll thank for you. I'll thank for you. Does, does anyone freak out like if Black Jesus comes back and he's like, Man, you guys really like lowercase t's? It's like, oh, it's not a lowercase t. He's like, oh, what is it? It's like that was that thing that you died on. It's like, wow, I'm going back. <clears throat> I don't why would I like that? Why do you think I like that? It's like we thought you liked this. No, I hate those. Yeah, and they see I them really everywhere. I never Christian around their <laughs> yeah. neck. Like, why Isn't why that a, I like that? That's a <laughs> David Cross bit. I think that's a David Cross oh, bit. Oh, is it? Oh, well, I love David now, Cross. I someone might else may have yeah. Yeah, that could be, but yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All these Christians wearing wearing crosses on the crucifix on their necks. It's like, yeah. do you really think that a cross is the first thing Jesus wants to see when he comes back? Yeah, <laughs> I feel like if he was beheaded. Would it would they be wearing a guillotine? Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Or if he was like kidnapped by Al Qaeda. You wouldn't want that little weird squiggle thing that they use or whatever. I don't know a balaclava or whatever. It's like we. If I if I was in charge of the marketing department of Christianity, it would be like doves. Like that is an yeah. easy, just only doves are our thing. Yeah. There, are, everybody loves doves. You use them magic. That's great. Everyone, no one's looked at doves and been angry. Or the fish thing, kind of sure. Yeah, why not? Yeah, but not the cross. That's like hardcore. Some some metalhead got through, and like was like well, someone's girl, someone's boyfriend or girlfriend, and snuck it in. And, and especially the crucifix, mm -hmm. when they have his figure on the cross. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Dread Pirate, we're talking about iconography. What would be the better iconography for Christianity? What What's your feedback? Well, I'm marketing I'm, chief. Yeah, loaf of bread. I don't know. Loaf of bread. <laughs> Everybody loves bread. <laughs> Piece of toast, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the bad. Jesus, Jesus, on it. Jesus, is on it. Jesus is on it. <laughs> yeah, there I, you go. <laughs> I feel like if we did toast, we start to start <laughs> fractions in the society of bread, where it's just like I'm That's a right. little evil, I'm a little nice, I'm a little whole wheat, yeah. and you got the wheat bread, and you're just like, what are you trying to say? <laughs> the white toast. Wheat <laughs> bread matters. <laughs> <laughs> wheat bread matters. <laughs> oh, All right, goodness. Uh. Uh, Dread, we were talking a lot about the space flight in the first half of the show. Oh yeah, it launched from Florida. Did you are you aware of it? And what do you think about the idea of us landing in Mars within our lifetimes? I 
I am absolutely all over it. I just love it. I mean, as a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut. I I was old enough to watch uh, Neil Armstrong and his crew land on the moon. Wow, 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 um, wow. And it was amazing. I was just enthralled by it from that point on. Um, and it's been a long standing uh, hobby of mine, astrophysics and cosmology and all the rest of it. So, yeah, I'm, Did you I'm see the totally rocket? into it. Did you see the rocket finally land like how they do in like the Twilight Zone where it's just like this big long thing that just lands straight up? It, yeah, it looks so science fiction-y, artificially, you know, <laughs> fakey sort of yeah. stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's amazing. It really is. It's, yeah. it's, the, it's the coolest launch ever, I think, in my opinion. Yeah. Also, yeah. the cockpit's all touch screens. I feel like the astronauts are pushing buttons, but the mission control's like, no, we're not letting you do <laughs> They they think they're flying this yeah, thing. When they're just they're just going like through apps. It's like, oh, I can play pigs versus zombies or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. Mission control's like, okay, let's land this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, that's that's bad i'd say thank you guys for you know risking your lives and you know putting yourselves out there and and the commitments that everyone did to get that up there men and women different different everybody different coming together to make this incredible thing happy i'm so happy mm -hmm. really cool all right nor the end of the show we got five minutes left uh let's do call out jw you got stuff coming up in the future you got your centritheus terrible podcast name <laughs> well actually um uh bad news oh no um, um carl has uh kind of hit some things in his personal life where he's yeah. um unable to continue Fair moving enough. forward on um what the podcast we were going to do so Hi, i am right. left to speak your beautiful mind and here um i also i also recorded with uh faithless florist this morning nice um, cool. so i got i've got opportunities so i just you know just got my own youtube youtube channel that we you know we did the recording last night you and i ty and those and, that's coming out for sure yeah and i look forward to doing an se like you do nice uh, i look forward to having my music and comedy out just when things whenever they will it may take a year or so for Thanks Take to, your time with it. It's no big deal. I would yeah. say this. Fanny is also available for you to do an interview. She just did an interview with Nathan, and it was really, really good. I highly recommend it. Nate, Fanny loves interviewing people, and she has a pizzazz that's immediately infectious. You, you would love the experience. And then also uh, our videos for Speak Your Beautiful Mind are coming out. as like the test demo of like the stream of consciousness, one person talking for 10 minutes, not stopping, and the other person forcing themselves to try to stay aware of like where the conversation is going throughout it's it's a weird experience and it gets intense um and then uh boudreaux listen how many how many episodes of bourbon street are you going to be sitting on before you finally lift them out to the masses what's going on here <laughs> our magic number we're going to go shoot for five we got two nice. done we, we nice. did one with fanny oh uh, yeah. nice I, I will admit, I, I don't know that it'll be very kid-friendly. Um, <laughs> is the territory with Fanny? <laughs> Ever, yeah. I don't know. All right. It's, it, it went interesting way. It was cool. But we are, we, we've got another one planned for, I think, Tuesday night. Where Let we're me know if talk. I can hop in in any of those. Yeah, yeah. No, I think, uh, uh, yeah, I think, you know, we've got a cool format where, where Chad and I are kind of uh, interviewing, so to speak. But, but we, we can handle lurkers, and, and sure. I think it'll be fine. I'd be interested um, too. Yeah, we're gonna do uh, civil civil rights, civil liberties, that kind of thing. So, and then hopefully talk about seatbelts, because um, nice. we just never got to it last time. So yeah, well, you've been uh, supporting our broadcast for so long. I'm happy yeah, to help so, you when when you yeah. uh, if you need yeah. me. Well, and I'd love love for everyone to help share it. Um, we'll we'll get that one out. Um, yeah, I'll throw this out. Sure. Hey, Larry, if you have like a weird radio thing, I'd be happy to join in on that too. Maybe we can okay. meet up once a oh, week cool. and talk about it. Keep that and in mind. If, yeah. If there's like yeah. a live atheist TV show or something like that, I'd be like, oh, wow, <laughs> explain that to yeah. me. Well, we'll, 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 think, we'll keep you in mind. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Gary. Actually, uh, the, uh, the TV show, uh, <laughs> I have talked to you before about this, I think. And um, yeah. they're, they're, I told them they have permission to use our videos Fantastic. as content for their TV shows. So we may be seeing some of this. On the, You're uh, saying we're going to be on TV too? Yeah. <gasps> well, wow. not actually TV. Hey, I mean, that's that, good. that day has gone. They okay, fair enough. Years. Radio's cooler than TV these days. Well, anyway. it's internet. <clears throat> and, In and Internet history. killed the 
TV star? Radio killed the internet star? I forget. And COVID killed the radio star. Yeah. 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 All right. Dread. Your video killed. Dread. Video killed. Speaking yep, yeah. of OBS that no one mentioned, Dread, you're playing around with OBS. What's going on there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was uh, yeah trying to get that all set up and I saw it. And teach, teach myself how to get her done. Um, I had a two minute clip there that uh, Ty saw and says, "Did you actually need to post that?" Yeah, and uh, but it was funny because I had a couple of people say, "Oh, great editing, man! You know, let's be friends." Um, of course, there's it's all tongue in cheek, but uh, I appreciated oh. that. I appreciate that there was a uh, you know a few pairs of eyes on it. Um, but I, I think I've got, I think I've got it worked out. And if I hadn't been, uh, remiss this morning, I would have been on and set up to actually put this on. Uh, my oh, I'd be totally live. fine. That. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So yes, how about, uh, you know, if you guys are okay with it, I'd like to do that for next week. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Absolutely. And like I say, I'm sorry. I, I didn't make it earlier. I was, uh, I was really keen on it, and then uh, we it wouldn't be Canada stuff. without an apology for no reason, right? So, yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, hey. we had this. We had I'm a torrential rainstorm guys. last night, uh-huh. and that's uh, all your we're fault. Actually, <laughs> we're actually in in risk of flooding over here. So, oh no, we're just I'm trying to keep that. our yeah. Well, you know, I'm not personally, but I got to look out for my neighbors and help sure. sandbag if I have to. And yeah, absolutely. Good stuff, so, well, good luck with that. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Shoot, you guys can find me on YouTube under Let's Chat. I'm also tweeting a lot more since that space landing thing happened. And I got a, like I said, I have the interview that I did with uh, JW Kennedy. We'll maybe turn this into like a monthly thing where we just like check back. I'd like to try some stream of consciousness thing too, because I know I got a lot of stuff in my mind. But also looking forward to two o'clock central time today, where I'll be talking with Pedro and trying to not be preached at for, for at least an hour and keep the conversation focused on like, hey, you're a former atheist, I'm an atheist, let's talk about atheism. Like that's, that's a cool thing to, that we can both agree to talk on. And uh, I'll post that on my channel too. So look forward for that. Larry, what do you got? Well, as usual, if you want to find me or any of the stuff I've done, just go to digitalfreethought.com for blogs of uh, these radio shows. Noises. Oh my. <laughs> Uh, drop the speaker back there, apparently. Or you, if you have any questions <laughs> Down a for the show, Goldberg machine or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you have any questions for the show, send them to Ask an Atheist at KnoxvilleAtheist.org. If you'd like to find our podcasts, you can find them anywhere pretty much on iTunes, Stitcher, Luminary, Podcast.com. Just do a search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Now on YouTube, uh, under Let's Chat, and also on under my channel, I'm posting there as well. So. Join us again next week at uh, Wednesday at 7 o'clock on WOZO Radio for another Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. And as a reminder, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Nice. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. everybody. Yeah. See you later. Stay rational. <laughs>